No, the bins are correct. One is for the carrier. Yeah. Because you have the tower open. That is correct. Are required. Yes. I hear there's controller confusion out there. Not for me. I know. But maybe we'll call the public. All right. I will say both. Okay. Yeah, it spreads fast. Like when they get in bad gas. So, you know, we talk to student pilots all the time. They're traffic control. And depending how grumpy the controller is or the pilot is, usually it's work together. Any indication that you don't understand what they want you to do is you ask them. Yes. Right. Greenville Tower is a contract tower. It is not an FAA tower. We'll let you know that. They get paid less than the standard. Probably the same, but I don't know. Okay. I would prefer to make a living out of a city tower. All right. We're on page, excuse me, not page. I wanted to get this out of the way. Did I get some of you guys a chart supplement the other day? It looks something up. Do you guys remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Say yeah. Okay. Did I give you one? Yeah. Okay. I don't remember what you're supposed to look up. Did I give you one? I think I gave you one. Well, you got one now. Let me get one of these. All right. So you know the one on the stage? Yep. Which one? Not Mississippi. Okay. Everyone brought one. All right. Find me an airport in Texas in there. Just kind of keep your finger on it. Find an airport in Texas. Well, let's find one in Oklahoma. We got an airport in Oklahoma. How about you, man? What kind of states? Not Mississippi or Oklahoma. Okay. Texas. What is this book called, guys? That is a directory. Chart supplement. Chart supplement. On your exam, they're going to talk about chart supplement. And we're not even going to have pictures of chart supplement. I don't want you to feel like you're missing out or anything. I see you over there. Chart supplement. I want you to look at me, all right? What, you want one? Yeah. Here you go. You can have one. All right, but there might be another one over there. I don't know. Can I get mine here? Yes, sir. All right. Wait, what's the front of the book look like? Look, so don't open these maps up just yet, okay? Confusion seems to rain when we do that. I don't know why. You got a book. Am I finding the same one? Yeah, I don't need a map. You need a map? No. Don't open them up just yet, okay? I'm going to need it. I don't know if you need a map. Okay. A guy told me in Alaska, I said, I'm going to drive up to Mount Denali. He says, you don't need a map. There's only one road out of Anchorage. All right, let's see. You got one. Let's see. This one's full. Yes. What airport are we going for? Well, you got one in Louisiana? Sure. All right. All right, so since we're starting with the sectional, this is what this is what this is called, right? Yes, sir. PFR sectional. I may have one on the wall in here somewhere. I don't know. Maybe that's my Memphis. That's the terminal area chart. Over there, right? Over there. So here's the fascinating thing about this. They're going to ask you questions about the sectional. Took most of the answers right there, right? So uh, in here, somewhere, like page 49 or something. Let's do page down. Maybe that works. Nope, that was it. Okay. Introduction to sectional charts, right here. You can go to the online ground school and watch a video. Maybe one of y'all did that. I can name names. Okay, what's the difference in the two colors right here? The airspace. The airspace? Yep. No power. See right here? Oh. Uh, right, you you'll get to answer the next question. All right. Appreciate uh, your gumption. This would be right, though. Okay. So the color, right? You see the color? Yes, sir. There's something like, I'm going to say magenta and blue. Am I close? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I read that somewhere. So the color tells you whether there's a tower or not. That's pretty easy stuff. As you scroll on down, 
Other things that you'll look and, and notice, tower, non-tower, heliport, seaplane, runway configuration. How about this star right here? What does that mean? Rotating beacon. Rotating beacon. That's what that star means. There's a beacon there. Okay? We all know what the beacon is. What color is the beacon? The beacon. Green and white. Green and white. A land airport is green and white. They had that thing rolling last night. Yeah. Yeah. Fast forward. What, what, what does that mean? An airplane's coming in? The beacon? Yeah, because it doesn't always turn on. When is the beacon operating? Whenever it's under VFR condition. Okay, under, it's less than IFR. Yeah. I'm sorry, less than VFR. Is that what you yeah. said? I don't think that's what you said. You operate yeah. it two conditions, okay? Sunset to sunrise, and if the weather's IFR, yeah. less than VFR. I can see under it from my VFR. house. What's my house is like three miles away. So what, this is what people are going to say. Oh, oh, I'm operating under VFR. You understand what I'm saying? That means... Oh, I got you. It'll be how you say it, okay? Yeah. And so you're three miles from this airport now? Yeah, my pa I can see it at my parents' right. house, and I can see it at my house in Bolton. So tell me again the two conditions when the beacon is on. What, what, what other conditions? Sunset to sunrise. Now, this will vary at airports like this one, right? Who's in charge of that? You know, if there's a tower, they look at it and turn it on, okay? So, sunset to sunrise, and when's the other time that the airport beacon is on? IFR conditions. IFR conditions. At the airport. Okay. Airport. Okay, new beacon. Scrolling on. Look at all this information we got right here. Talk look about at, overload. Here we go. I want everybody, everybody got one of these? Raise your hand if you got one of these. All right, we're going to start with you over there in the corner. Of the I got one from last hey, one for... All right, look here. Uh, so, uh, you see what I got over here? Can you see what I'm looking at? More job. All right, grant three. Uh, well, it's got the answer right there. I don't want you to tell me what the answer is. I don't want you to do that. Unicom. What is the Unicom frequency? Unicom. That's, uh, Universal Communications. Universal. Sometimes people it's call it a CTAP. It's a little different. Okay. 122.8. There's different. I think there's two or three. That was the other one right there. 122.95. Okay. I think there's three different Unicom. But how about this right here, uh, grant number three? What's that number right there? 285. What is that number? It's in the talents. So I want, you, I want you to look on your map, see if you can find it, all right? It's only your legend, okay? Oh, uh, that is... You got a couple of I just went over this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, is it your ADL? Elevation of the yes. airport. Yes. Elevation of the airport. You say Elevation of the airport. So let's talk about AGNL and MSL. What is the, what is, well, standing right here at the airport, this airport has an, what is it called? MSL. What is it? 250. So we are 250 above what? Sea level. So this airport is 250 MSL. Yeah. Okay. This airport here, 285 MSL. You see how it's in the talents right here? Well, let's just keep on going. Who else has got a map there? Uh, grant number two. Yeah. Grant number, what is that L right there? Look on your chart, okay? Grant number one, how about this 72? 72 is the length of the longest runway at hundreds of feet. Okay, the length of the runway. Usable length maybe less. Man, I have no idea what RP23 and 34 is. Like, you know what it is? You know what it is? Special 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 I ain't got one of them. What do you say? Does the L have a star by it? This L does not have a star by it. Lightning and operation sunset sunrise. So lighting, airport lighting, right? Yeah. Lighting, see if you can figure this one out for me. Right here. This is RP. Yeah. Special okay, so what does <coughs> ATIS stand for? ATIS? Automatic. Automated information service. service. Do we have that around here? Yes. Where? On the C tab. Is okay. it not? Okay, I need you to be quiet for two minutes now. Uh, <laughs> there's one airport around here that has an ATIS. Jackson. Jackson. Oh, I see. No. <laughs> Automatic terminal information service is a recorded message that gives you the weather, the landing runway, all kinds of neat stuff. They're, I wonder if they got an ATIS agreement. Dude, if you don't quit. He told you not to talk. What do you got? I was going to tell you the RP stands for public use. Okay, thank you. RP is public use? No, RP. Oh, good. Oh, good. Uh, I'm going to look at RP2334, <coughs> public use runway, is that what you're telling me? Yes. I don't see 23 and 34, maybe that's 34, I don't know. Uh, it had a, 
Error point two. So what does it say? RP is what? It says. It is uh, right uh, traffic pattern. Traffic. Right pattern. Or Railways road. with right traffic okay. pattern. All right, there you go. That's the right traffic Let's pattern. Right see. Pattern. All right. <clears throat> okay. We got enough of all that. Let's keep on going. <clears throat> Good job, Layton. Can y'all tell what these numbers are? By the way, the rubber runways are. What's this runway? Three six one eight, right? Looks like it anyway, right? North south. How about how about this one, Caleb? What do you think? If this is three six one eight, what is this? Nine two seven, right? It's like it's on the uh, you know the three sixty thing. Look at all this fun stuff. No special this, that, any other more information. <clears throat> What's this circle right here called? That is your Vortac. Well, it is, but they also call it a Compass Rose. Compass Rose. Why is it called a Compass Rose? 360 yep. degrees. It's 360 degrees. Got one degrees. around the radar, they call it a Compass Rose, okay? And it's usually around the VUR that tells you the headings for the Victor Airways. I think we can tell the difference in the airspace there. Y'all see the difference between the surface airspace for class D? Is this E down here? Where is E? I don't see E. Oh, that was E. Class D. This is class E. What's the difference in color? One's blue, one's magenta. And what was the other thing about blue and magenta? Why do we have different colors? Non-towered and towered. Okay, so class D, blue, has a tower surface area. Class E, you will see class E surface airspace, okay? Does not have a tower. Airways. Victor Airways. Victor 18 runs from Jackson to Meridian. The Victor Airways. What's the bottom and top of that airway? <coughs> Altitude bus. Well, if you guys think about that, we'll move on to something else. <coughs> Low federal air. Well, well, here, airways. Uh, 25,000. No. Nope. No. Nope. Obstructions. I think we covered this the other day. Yeah. The difference between a little one and a big one? This is a symbol, what the symbol looks like. What, what, why do you get a big symbol and a little symbol? Because that's like a really tall... Uh, what's the number? Yeah, what's 250. the number? 250. There. Okay, you will get a symbol if you're 200 feet above ground. 200. How do you 200. get the big symbol? 1,000 feet. feet, and that is AGL. Okay? Okay, and that's why on the map they'll have MSLs and all that stuff. 1,000 feet AGL. Look, I got a picture of a wind turbine. You see the high intensity lights, group obstructions. Don't worry about the turbine farm. Obstacles have to be in there. I think they're still good. Guy wires, that's pretty cool. What are we looking at right here? Pretty sure. What, what are the different colors? Elevation. That's, that's the, yeah, right. elevation. It's on, it's on the map. This is your color. It's 2000, 2000. Right. I built an off on that for this this summer. I did. So equal elevation, they'll do that kind of stuff. All right. Let me see your map just briefly here. I open it up to somewhere without getting too crazy. And there's a there's a big there's a big one, and then there's a little three behind it. Thirteen. What does that stand for? It's in this this uh, one minute. 1, yeah. What, what's one thousand three hundred feet? In that area. Yeah, high obstacle in the area. Maximum elevation, okay? In that square, light of two, light of two. Other types of activities and symbols. VOR looks like that, that's all nice. Oh, look at here. Nav aid information box. How cool is that? It's the Vortac. Who does flight service? What, what does flight service do? Uh, they provide uh, flight information to pilots via so radio. Call a flight plan, maybe yep. ask for some weather or something, right? The frequencies are there, there's the name, and there's the Morse code for it. Yep. Oh boy, I don't want to talk about airspace. Do we want to talk about airspace? Yes. I do. Do, do we know airspace, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, we'll just jump right in and keep on moving here. Class C airspace, we know what they look like. What kind of airspace is this? That is uh, class. Um, looks like Somebody besides David. Class C. Will y'all good with that? Yeah. Why is it Class C? It's got two bells. Magenta, solid. Yeah. Magenta, right? Magenta. 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 
Yeah. So what's the class C airspace in this circle right here? Can you see it? Yeah. Tell so me about the, the height. Tell me Service to 50? No, 5,000. 5,000. MSL. So that's from the airport to 5 miles out? Yep. Okay. Surface to 5,000. And then this is the outer ring. 10 miles? That's 5 miles, miles to 10 miles. What's the altitude for that? Uh, 5,000 to 25. That's a ship. That's a ship. Yeah, so that's very clear and visible. So that's class C airspace. If we had a D up there, I don't see it. Uh, what is this? This airspace. The same. D to 700. D? This is D? No. That's G to 700. This indicates E, right? Right? Up to seven. I mean, it's G, but it's 700 feet. Yeah, up to seven. Then it turns to E. And what color is that? Magenta. That's like. Okay. So that's class E. Okay. I wonder what the airspace is right here. G. Or G. Right? Is that under control? Right here? Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So it's like assume G to 1200 feet. Unless it's got that ring, then it's 700. Correct. Well, that's G right here, up here, 1200. And also band right here, class G, 700. Because it's around an airport, by the way, is when you have those plenty of looking. Moving on over. All right. What kind of airspace is this? Who said it? Me. This is class D. Mm -hmm. So is there a tower there? Yeah. I wonder what that tower frequency is. Let's see. It's on there. Come on, late. You're kind of quiet, man. 122.95 or. 128.475. That's the C tab. Look, look, look on your chart. Look, do you see it? I see it, yeah. Which one is it, hey? 122.95. See, I just feel yeah. like I, I thought it was C tab. I thought it was the 120. I didn't see that. Bro. I think this is the C tab. Uh, this, this is the ATIS. I assume there's an ATIS. And uh, the C. Pull out your map, guys. Somebody look at, tell me what I'm looking at right here. You've got a legend there that will tell you. Okay? Here, here, David. No, the 128 is the C tab because the C comes after. It. Yeah. <laughs> so this right here is what? No, that's the C tab. C follows the contract. Because the C follows after it. Well, I got a star right here, too. Indicates operation part time C tower frequency tabulation for hours of operation. I'm completely confused. I still don't have a tower for something. Or so do it. it's no, so it's not a tower then. Oh, yeah. Or it's a tower that closes. But what's, so it's going to no. be the same frequency, right? That's the, it's uh, 128.47. Is the tower frequency? Is the tower frequency. G right. Give a celebrity shout out to Mr. Peavy for one. 128.475. What's the 122.95 down here? Unicom. Okay. And, oh, look, 1001 in italics. What could that be? We just covered this. That's the elevation. The elevation of the airport, right? Uh, the ATIS frequency. They have an ATIS there, which we don't have here. So there's a controller up there who's making a recording. Uh, what's the three-letter identifier for this airport? JXN. JXN. I always thought that was Jacksonville. But today it's Jackson County Reynolds. Okay. So the Unicom is the control tower frequency? Uh, sometimes they overlap. There's a Unicom, there's a CTAF, and there's a control tower. Well, I'd really like it if somebody could tell me what happens when the tower closes. What is the CTAF? Um, it, it's probably the tower frequency. Yeah. So what do we use for the Unicom? Maybe somebody like people down here at the airport manager office? Maybe the FBO? Sure. Can you describe it any better, Mark? The Unicom frequency? Are you familiar with this? Not really. Anybody else? I'm, I'm reviewing, you know, periodically. I pick up my uh, ground school book and yeah. review. Yeah. I was actually using it. So, so we got a control tower frequency. We've got a CTAP, common traffic advisory frequency. Y'all done this pilot, right? We're on a left base. And then a Unicom is generally a frequency for FBOs, maybe the airport office. You can call in ahead. A Unicom, okay? Universal communications, like that. Now, since this is class D airspace, what is the ceiling? 35. 35. Is that HEL or MSL? HEL. Kill us. In the box? Kill us. Is MSL? 
MSL. If you remember, generally, Class D airspace goes up 2,500 feet. Hey, Gio, well, let's do the math here. Airport is at what? Oh, it's at 1,000. 2,500, so it's 3,500 MSL. M1. What's that? M1? They didn't put the M1 on there for you. All right, so uh, let's see here. Here's an R with a circle around it. A street. Private. Private airport. Um, Private airport. We've got our obstructions here. Do we have a tall obstruction in there? How about a, how about a lighted one? Do y'all see a lighted obstruction in there? I see one of those. They don't maybe closer to the airport. No. Class D airspace. And what is this? Class what airspace? E. 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 Okay. Yeah, do you see parachute operations? Yeah. Uh huh. Bottom right. Right, right here. Right. This is a symbol for parachute operations. That's right. a question on the flight. Uh, what is this? What goes on so many miles southeast of somewhere? Uh, there. What's the star on the top of the? Um, this one. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Right there? The, like where the actual airport. Star indicates operation time. Some tower frequency. That's the one. I think it's the tower, right? That's the one he's talking about. It's like right there next to the C-tower. That's the star. Yeah. yeah, what's that? Sorry. I have no idea. They're not the same thing? Mm -hmm. Well, when you find out, let me know. What's this symbol right here? That's kind of something. Right there. there you go. It's got a beacon, right? This one right here. Yeah. What about this right here? What's that look like? That's, That's a, a transmission, line. transmission line. Transmission line, okay. Anything else up there y'all don't know what it looks like? Anybody have any idea what DME stands for? That's like a VOR kind of. What does DME stand for? Uh, I feel like somebody knows that. Oh, I did. I watched the video and I was like, cool, distance, great. distance measuring equipment. Yeah. How far you are from somewhere, okay? And it's, you have the ability to tell you all that kind of stuff. Oh, look. But wait, there's more. Golly, look at all that. It's kind of odd how you got the airspace like that. But what, what kind of airspace do I see here? D. Or D, right, for Delta. What's the ceiling of this airspace for Delta right here? Can y'all see it? 2700. 2700. MSL. So that means the airport is probably what? 200 feet, right? Can we find the airport on there? It's 151. Right here. That's right. Okay. Keep looking for the bigger tower. All right. <clears throat> if not defined, Class E airspace is assumed to begin at 14.5 or 1,200 feet AGL, whichever is higher. If not defined. Don't get too lost on that. I don't think it'll be confusing if you think about it. It does extends up to the overlying airspace, which is more important, right? Whoa, what do we got here? A light and shaded shade indicates classy airspace upward to seven feet AGL. We're good with that. So is it 700 over an airport and 1200 everywhere else? It'll vary. Some airports don't have it at 700, depending if they have an approach there. Generally 1200 everywhere else. Okay. Light blue shaded area, let's see, shaded blue lines are not present. Class East first begins at 1200. All right, moving on. Light blue shaded area. Class E airspace beginning at the surface is that magenta dash. Okay. Ah, airways. So maybe somebody can tell me where the airways are, their altitudes. They begin at 1200. 1200 AGL. feet AGL. What do you think they go up to? 10,000. Well, yeah, you think it's 1799. Is it somewhere? You're right. Where is it? Is it up there? No. <clears throat> I'll just take a best guess. We'll say Victor 18 is 1200 up to 17999. That's M S L. This is AGL. Can't write very clear. What is this right here? What is J4? Jet route? We got a Victor airway, right? Below 18,000? Yep. Where's the jet route start? Above 18,000. 18,000 8, 18, jet routes. Okay. 18,000 MSL. Special what flight. about I, uh, IR? Yeah. See if we can find that on here in a minute. I'd rather you look on your Aren't phone. Military? Yes. Yes. Let's yeah. see here. 
Different types of airspace. There's different types. Is that where we are? I thought we were. Special use airspace. Look at that right there. We got a P, an R, and a W. What's the P? Prohibited. Prohibited, which means don't go there, right? Mm -hmm. Where would be some prohibited airspace be? Uh, military, like Washington fire ranges. Ranges. Washington, yeah, Washington, D.C. is a good one. Uh, Prohibited. Now, some active firing ranges. Yeah. Is that stadiums, too? Uh, like during the game? I don't think they call it. I think it's a temporary flight restriction. It's not prohibited. Yeah. You know what I'm it's just how they do it. Uh, I want to say the nuclear reactor is prohibited. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, Grand Gulf is uh, definitely prohibited. So uh, it's prohibited. It's got a number like P-56. How about a restricted area? Do we have that up here, what it talks about, a restricted area? Unusual... Air training and something. There used to be a restricted area 4044 northeast of Jackson, and they would announce it. We're going to do some bombing runs. That's the military out of Columbus. It's, it's out in the woods, way out there. Restricted area, unusual, often visible hazards to aircraft. I'm going to highlight that because that is somebody's going to. So they just drop bombs in the middle of the forest? As long as it's your way to it. It's all. Uh, you know, it's, it's not real, right? They're dropping fakes or something. They're doing fake drama. And they also have another place where they're touching guns up there. Restricted areas. Uh, warning areas. Can you go in a warning area? Yeah. You can. You can. I have permission. All right. Mil MOAs. Military operating area. We have one northeast of Jackson, one south of Jackson. 8,000 to 23,000. Can you go through a MOA? With uh, permission. Permission from the controlling agency. Yeah. Controlling, if, yeah. If controlling. the MOA is hot, what does that mean? Um, Dangerous. It's active. Yeah. It's active, and you're not going to go through their eye fall. No. You can fly VFR through a MOA. Only experienced pilots tend to do it. I don't know why. It's like a challenge in the military. So, you know, if you're out there training in a military jet, and you've got this airspace, and here comes this VFR, how do you feel about that? You know, a military pilot. You know what's next? Watch this. Wow. Okay, I mean, maybe I shouldn't be around here. There's a story of two T-38s, you know, trainers. The T-60s are still in effect today. They're somewhere to start. Flying along, and this plane's coming in a place where he shouldn't be. These two T-38s, I think they're kind of looking. And this is what they do. Here comes the place. what they do. The bubble went below. Just don't mess with the ammo ways, okay? Two more times. You can go there VFR. Not recommended. See here, it says right here, if operating V4, use caution in the way. <laughs> alert area. What is an alert area? It tells you right here. High volume of pilot training or unusual aerial activity. So let's remember that. Alert area, high volume of pilot training. Prohibited, you can't go there. Anybody want to go to, to a controlled firing area? That sounds like fun, huh? Let's go to the controlled firing area down there by Camp Shelby and see what happens. Let's don't do that. Military training routes, IR, VR. What's the difference between the IR route and the VR route? The Instrument train. and visual. Okay, we good with that? IR training route or a VFR training route. The MTRs that include one or more segments are identified with 1500s. They're going to have different numbers. That's the cutoff. If it says it's IR4218, is that above or below 1500? It says it right there. Military segments that include above 1500 are identified with three digit numbers. So did I say that right? Did y'all say that right? I don't think y'all no, said that right. Military above 1500 have a, with no segment above 1500. Below 1500 are four, okay? You don't see me. IR routes below 1500, okay? There'll be VR routes used. All right. And those are on the maps. You'll see our routes and such. You ever been out in the country somewhere in a military plane passes over, passes over your head? Yeah, he's on his route. Upside down, doing 400 miles an hour. All right. Got through all that. Terminal radar service. More things on the map. Farms. We talked about obstructions right there. A thousand feet gets you the uh, taller obstruction. AGL. That difference for the lights, we understand it's uh, 
It is lit. Let's see, that was a rotating beacon somebody was asking about above it. Of course. And, all right. Radio frequency. Uh, I want to go back to airspace one more time. I feel like this is something. They will ask you a bunch of questions. Team scope. Do this. And we're pressing buttons. I'll get there sooner or later. Where in the world am I? I don't know where that is. Let's go where we need to go. Though. Let's go to. Uh, let's try Memphis. That was the last place we were looking at stuff. All right. Over there. So we've looked at Memphis before, haven't we? What kind of airspace are we looking at? Class B. Everybody got that? Yeah. Uh, if you look on the chart, it says right here, mode C and ADSB out at this range. I can't remember if it's 25 or 35. So that's what that is. And then you got your shelves in Class B airspace. So if our pilot can just come in and just start flying in Class B airspace, is that right? No. What are you going to do? Got to call, you got to call the, uh, to get, permission. get permission from the approach control in Class B airspace. There is Class D airspace up here. Right? We covered this, right? Y'all see the dash line? Mm -hmm. Okay. What's, what, what town is it? Uh, uh, 1006. 1006? Okay. That's an interesting town. Olive Branch? Y'all see it right here? I don't know what that is. It used to be LOV for Olive Branch. Yes. What's the first letter identifier? Looks confusing. Do we want to fly in this airspace? Mm -hmm. OLB. OLB, right? All the Of course, this right here is a safe line. Any questions about anything on that map about airspace? Around these airports, they have the uh, 700 foot AGL Class E airspace. Okay, because there are planes flying in and out of them. There's other airports that don't have that. What did we call this circle right here a little while ago? Compass. Compass Rose. Why would we have a Compass Rose right here? VOR. VOR. VOR, and there's an airway going out from it. 004, does it say what airway it is? Gotta say it on there somewhere. Victor 11. So, how low does Victor 11 go? We just had the question. What's that? What's that face of the Victor airway? 1200 AGL up to 999 MSL, the Victor airway. Okay. Whew. Better slow down. I don't really want to talk about radio frequencies. Gigahertz, megahertz, Ooh, ionosphere. We can talk about that. Line of sight. What does that mean? You know what that means? Line of sight. I can see it, right? Yeah. Everybody's in my line of sight. If there's a mountain between it, what happens when you don't have line of sight? You may not get radio communication, okay? Use the VHF and uh, radio frequencies. What do you do when you're flying through mountains and you know you're about to lose radio frequency? You cross your fingers and hope you're not going to die. No. Uh, most people who fly in mountain areas are usually trained more than we are around here in terms of communication and navigation. Don't get too low. Try not to do it too often. 2.2, still moving. Ed Bay, hey, circulars. Uh, chart supplement, we finally got to it. Can you turn the light on for me over there? Some of the people in this class have got what we call a chart supplement. Chart supplement. And I don't remember who I gave my favorite one to Laura. She didn't look at hers. How about it, uh, Grant number two? Which airport did you show, did you find? Uh, Lake. Lake, can I see it? Oh my gosh. What the heck, man? What'd you call it, Lake Who? Does, do you have the identifier for it? Lake. Hmm? Can I say it when you get done? Yeah. Uh -huh. You don't have a, what's it near, man? Is it, what part of Texas is it? Where is it? It's not Texas. It's Can I see this Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Yeah. Well, give me a three letter identifier for something in Oklahoma. I'm gonna go ahead and, go ahead and pull the structure right. Oklahoma City, OKC, okay? OKC, Church, Air Force, I thought that's what I did. Uh, yes. Charts. That's what I want. Oh, no. I there was a way to get. Tell me about Oklahoma City. What do you know? What's on that thing in there? Let's that look at Oklahoma City. Anything? The nothing, huh? Probably some of the stuff like I got up on the board right here. Does it give you a map? 
to using a map. How about over here? Do you see any of this stuff like airport open to the public? Any of mm -hmm. that kind of stuff? Uh, it says trees. It says trees. Okay. It is open to the public. It is open to the public. If you look up here, this is the chart supplement. And it, maybe it looks a little bit like that. Is that getting confusing? I guess you have to get that light bulb again there, but if you turn it off there, it's getting kind of right here. Look at all this information in here. You not ready for that? I mean, there's a lot of information in here. Chart supplement, Oklahoma City Airport. We got a, how many runways they got? Three. They're long? They should be. One, two, three. Looks like they might have one right here. Four. Okay. What is the... Uh, Let's see right here. Will Rogers, their National Guard, picked up UTC minus six. What the heck is that? Um, the time, right? And it says minus five for daylight, which is where we are right now, right? Mm -hmm. So their time is probably the same as us because we're central. 1296 BL class one R index C for some of those airport operations people. Runway 17 left. Talks about the dimensions, right? And it tells you what kind of runway it is. I gotta think about what SDS is right here. One seven left. This is the approach light system. All this information is available. Another approach light system talks about the runway. Scroll on down. How about towards the bottom? Did you find anything interesting about like in the remarks? Grant's got a question. Just a second. Do you get a is it the remarks? Look right here. See what I'm talking about? Yeah. Tell me something about Oklahoma City you didn't know for. What? Mom, yours. Yours. Uh, this is. I'm not into Oklahoma City. Yeah, I'm what? I was up there with the original one I told you. Okay, disregard. Right here. All these remarks, okay? Nine passenger seats, attendant continuous, there's birds out there, prior permission. You're good. So it tells everything about it. If somebody was to say, uh, what's the ATIS frequency? That is a question on knowledge test. What's the ATIS frequency? Would it be up there? Where does it say? Right here somewhere, doesn't it? 125.851. Is this also on the sectional? Yes. Because it'll show. We may have a question in a few minutes on the test. This, this frequency is on the sectional and on the chart supplement. Hey, it's a phone number. Does it get a phone number? Airport manager. Oh. Yeah, call them up and ask them how they're doing, okay? They may, they may be a little busy. Anybody got any idea what type of what a VOR test facility is a box? Uh, check your VOR to see if it's working. Um, all kinds of information about the instrument approaches and the runways and blah 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 blah. Are we done yet? No, we are not done yet. So, as air traffic controllers, we use that green book. Did you get it back to me? Oh, you got that. We used to call it the green book, and we would go to Raymond and look up the airport manager's phone number when a plane landed IFR and did not tell us he canceled his IFR. We would call out here. We would get somebody like Hiram on the shelf. What? You did what? Who did what? what? I'm not there. Right? Somebody had to find it. If they did not go find the airplane, we would call the police because the IFR, you'd have to let us know. What if your VFR, you file a flight plan, do you have to cancel your VFR flight plan? No. Yeah, somebody's got to make a phone call. If you open it up to flight service and you land somewhere else and you don't cancel it, they're going to come looking for you. In an airport like Jackson, we would just call over here. And if we can't get that, we'd call law enforcement to come look for you. So how do you, how you cancel one? You just tell them, you can tell the approach controller, hey, approach, could you go ahead and cancel my vehicle flight plane? They don't like it too much. What's another way to cancel it? How did, how did you open it? How did you make it? You know what I'm saying? You call them, right? You call them, 122.8 or something, 22.65. So there's different ways to call them, and the same way when you call them, you can cancel it at that time. Anyway, let's don't get lost in all the information like I just did, because it'll just make you wonder. Oh, man, get me out of that. All right, somebody else give me an airport they picked up on their chart supplement. What you got? Fort Worth and Mutual International. Fort Worth. What's that identifier? FTM or FTW. Man, how do I get there? I have no idea. It's FTW. 
All right. Tell me something about Fort Worth that you didn't know. Like, mm -hmm. like maybe when it was built. 1938. 1938. Does it have gas? I bet it does. What's the ground control frequency? 121.9. How about the ASOS? You know, the weather. Can you call up and get the ASOS weather? Yes. Yeah, it's got a phone number. Uh, 817740. That's it. I'm, I'm waiting on Hayes to tell you something about it. I was in the book. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you find something in there that you wanted? Just anything. Any kind of odd information? Uh, nothing odd. Okay, something common then. Give me something common. <laughs> the, so runway, the runway is so long. Slide slope indicator, elevation, oh my gosh, we could go on forever. Anyway, open up these things right here. All right, so you found Fort Worth Meacham. So what these books do, there should be phone numbers in here if you need help, but sometimes it'll tell you if they got like car rentals and such. You got to look at all of it. Services, avionics, pilot instruction, annual survey. So, all right, I need oh, some. Wait, it said what kind of fuel it had. All right, don't worry about it. Did you have an airport? Did you have one? Yeah, it's got... It's got 100 LL. 100 LL. Jet A. Yeah, those are the two options, right? All right, we're going to do LFT. We all know where LFT is, right? Lafayette, Louisiana, maybe? Lafayette Regional. LFT. KLFT. When was that airport open? 1940. 1940. And again, we can just go all kind of crazy with all the information we have in here. Okay? Chart supplement. Tell me we're good with that. Yes, sir. Anybody got anything you want to add? I know some of you other guys had it. Why is she fighting tiger? Fighting tiger. Huh? You can get these online. Okay? Digital chart supplements. General information. This is a sample of the information that you can get. Some of them will tell you the traffic pattern. There's a question on the test. You can find it on here. Somewhere. Got to keep looking for it. More legends about uh, what you can find in the airport facility directory, otherwise known as the chart supplement. What a great time to go do something else. Right here. Absolutely. All right. Oh, look at here. What we got up here? We got some questions. All right, I want to call out people here to see how they're doing. I think. Uh, how about number one, Grant? Number two. Can you give me the answer to this question? Proper phraseology, Grant. Can't see it, man. Sorry, I probably made it bigger. Oh, that's funny that he can't see and he's quite bad, but always sits. David, just keep thinking about number two. All right. Yes, sir. Hey. Hey. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hey, you said hey. He said hey. I think it's uh. I think it's C. Did I hear C? Is that what I heard? How do you feel about that? Anybody else? I, I, I think we should go with C. So listen, air traffic controllers, hey, Jackson Tower or Memphis Center, it's always radio for FSS. McAllister Radio. I think it's this one right here, okay? Six six Charlie, that sounds good. All right, David, how about number two? The T R S A Tursa. Terminal Radio Service. And the Terminal Radar Program provides um, warning to pilots when their aircraft is unsafe. Yeah, B. I like B. Let's keep rolling here. All right, you want to contact AFC. What would you use in the event of an emergency? Let's think about this here. Where's uh, is Wes in here? What do you think, Wes? Hey. Everybody good with that? Yes, sir. So this is the VHF emergency frequency. What is the UHF emergency frequency? Uh, is it the 246? You're real close. Double that. Double that. What's uh, what is it? One. I mean, two. 242. 242. 243. You guys are mad. Hey, awful. 243. Don't know, man. You're right. Listen to this question. Aircraft departs somebody in Eastern Daylight Time, makes a two hour flight, lands in the Central Daylight Time. 1545 is mm. How'd you come up with that answer? Because I know what it is. It's because we memorized it, right? Can you can you take me through the steps how you got it? Absolutely. Not. Absolutely. You gotta not. click the figure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Does that matter? Does that, didn't that just show you? Right. Yeah, because you know, it gives you the uh, conversion. Okay. Yeah. Eastern daylight time? From Eastern to... Um, yeah, add four. Add four. Uh, I'm looking for that. Plus two because of the flight time. So we are in daylight time, right? So you add four to that number, which was this, so that gives you... Yeah, what? add six. Is it a two-hour flight? Six thirds. Let's see. Four thirteen is fifteen forty-five to air. So the answer is fifteen forty-five. All right. Okay. We'll roll with that. Military air station identifying. We know this, right? Light flashes between green flashes. Let's ask somebody here. Uh, okay, uh, Grant number three. What's the uh, VFR code? You hear me? Where are you? You're over there. Yeah. Either B or C. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it's not B or C. We know that, right? Yeah, I know. Those are. Uh, those are emergency. Emergency. Yeah, those are emergency. <laughs> All right. Hi, Jack. Radio failure. Uh, let's let's go to Hunter and Laura. They'll team up here. How about number seven, young? What do y'all think there, man? So your VFR, right? So so uh, we're up VFR. Let's stay on twelve hundred. It's definitely not I like this one right here. Okay, I never heard of mode F. Did we do this one? We didn't do this one, did we? Hunter, we didn't do this. What well, minimum altitude is necessary to clear obstacles southeast of Winsboro Airport by 500 feet? You guys already know the answer, right? Yeah. Where is Winsboro at? That's somewhere. Right. I'm pretty sure. There it looks like it over there, right? There's Winsboro. Where is it? Where is it? 903. So it's at five five. Right here? So it's 1403. 1403. Is that MSL? It is divided by 500. Yeah. What? Don't you just find it and add 500 because you need to clear about yeah. 500. And we're saying 903 plus 500? Yeah. Right? Okay, I'm going to go with that answer. That'd be this one. Here. Here. All right, so I think we did this one, didn't we, Hunter? Lat long is true. This isn't the same question, is it? And if we did it past 10. Okay, so line, let's see, lines of longitude are parallel to the equator. I don't think that's the right answer. Is it V? Yeah, it's V. Everybody good with that? Yeah. No. Okay, the zero line of latitude, does that pass through Greenwich? No. No. I mean, no. What is it? There's something in England that has to do with aviation. Like, that is the Greenwich Mean Time. That's where the Zulus are keep right, and it's also zero longitude. Okay, uh, okay. So this one right here says, what's the latitude and longitude of Cooperstown? Do we have it up here? For yeah, us? I know this one. Yes, sir. It's the next one. It's A. Not that one. It's this one? Yeah, I got it. Is this it? Or here it is right here. So here's Cooperstown. We want to find the latitude. Here's 47. This is 47 north, right? Yes, sir. So that's 30. So it's going to be what? 10, 20. How many? Up? 47 what? I don't know. About 25. 47, 25 north. And then let's look at the longitude here. Where is that? Y'all see it up here anywhere? I don't see a number. Go out a little bit. Do y'all see the longitude number up there? Anywhere? No. Where did it go, man? Go What's that? Go up there. There you go. 98. 98. Is that 98? 40. All right, so this is 98 right here. How many minutes is that? Six or eight? Let's go see what we got for our answer, which was over here somewhere. I think right here. 98.6, we got that one. Was it 25 or 55? 25. 25. Everybody good with that? Because you got it memorized? Pretty much. What's our next one we had? Uh, oh man, I can't even see. 13. Refer to figure 2, cord alone. What frequency should be used as a common traffic advisory frequency? 1.2.8. It's because you just memorized this thing, right? No, most CTAS are going to be 1.2.8. Do we see it up there? Yeah. Where? Yeah, it's, it's, it's right there. Cordelone. Right, right there. So what does this indicate now? This is the CTAP, right? That's what they want to know. And I believe it was also in the chart supplement, right? Probably got the wrong one there. Let's go to that one. It's it both of them. It's just underneath. Okay. All right. Oh, it is underneath it. All right. Let's see. So here's the chart supplement, and we're looking for the CTAP, right? Where would that be under? Communication. See it right here? 122.8, and that is in the chart supplement. Moving on, that's not the way to move on. There's, there's key point. I get out of this, right? So maybe see something that gets rid of that. Uh, what was our next number? 15. CTAF for Jamestown. Let's we'll be shouting it out. Let's see if we can figure it out here. Where is Jamestown? It's near Area 4. 
right here. Mm -hmm. And we see the CTAP, right? 123. 123. So we're able to do the boxes to some degree. Let's see. Is this the next one? CTAP for Barnes County, Area 5, <laughs> which would be right here. Barnes County, Dale. Maybe I can pull it up over here. It's, is it Barnes County? It's the yeah. next one. The next one? You'll see Barnes County in there right here. And they're asking for their CTAP, right? Two, two point eight. What's the C mean right here? CTAP? Yes. CTAP. All right. You said 228, I believe. Mm -hmm. Keep on going. Operating VFR below 18. Transponder code. We know that. Seems like we had that question already. The flag symbol at Lake Drummond. We talked about a flag symbol. Visual checkpoint. Visual checkpoint. Boy, I'm gonna have a hard time finding it on this one. You know where it is on here? Yeah, it's right. It's right, right next to two. Oh. Right next to two. Yeah, over. It should be a flag. Two. Other side. Oh. Flag. Right here. See that little flag right there? That is a VFR reporting checkpoint. What does that mean? What you do they do? It's a visual checkpoint. So here's what happened. Right okay. Uh, Y'all over down 49. What's that school down there? Piney Woods. I'd be working radar. Jackson approach just to 456 over Piney Woods. He tell me where he is. It's a VFR checkpoint. Let the approach know where he is, okay? That helps him to identify him. VFR checkpoint. Let's go back to here. How to read radar. Yeah, need that. It's, it's a C. You forgot to click it. Which one? This one? Yes. Which airport is located at... Oh, my gosh. Y'all remember? Y'all already got this one. Is it this one? B. Oh, let's yeah, see, let's see if we can find it, right, McKeith? It's uh, 144 West, 4734. Is this the right one? Wow, I couldn't tell you where that is. We're gonna do it this way. That's on the bottom. Keep going. Get right there. I don't see McKee. One hundred. Where's McKee on here? It's on the right in the arm. Yeah. Yeah, right there. Oh, there it is. Getting close. It's right here. My Devil's Lake. So where's the airport? Right here? Yep. Yeah. That's okay. a private. All right. See if we got our light lawns here to get us there. <clears throat> Let's go do this, right? Close that. Man, we got, if we make it 20, do we leave class early? Yeah, we'll do more. But absence of the sky condition and visibility on the ATIS broadcast see. indicates. <laughs> Does that make sense, you guys? We talked about this. The weather and visibility is better than 5,005, so you may not get the weather like 7,000 scatters and visibility 8. Did we answer all of them there? Uh, yeah. What did we say was the common traffic frequency there? 22.8, do y'all know? Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to put. Radar information is issued 12 o'clock. The reference controller uses is the what? True course. What? True, True course, because that's what he sees. Wait, go back up. Go. 4,500. 5,500, right? Uh, yeah. uh, I know I didn't hear 4,000. What was the answer for this one? The parts in the airport in the mountain. Two hours and 30 minutes in the airport in Pacific. Which, do we have an answer? Take the figure. Go to the figure. So he's going from mountain to mountain. Pacific. Mountain to, did we say it was daylight savings time? It was standard. Standard time. Six hours. Six, is that what it is? Yeah. No, they like time at six. All right, we'll go back to it. So it's it's 21 standard 15. time, not mountain day. 21, 15, 14. No, I'm still listening. 23.5. That's not one of the answers, is it? No, you got to subtract the specific Pacific standard time. Anybody else got an answer for them? They got it memorized, right? I think it's... Uh, this is, oh, let's don't get this wrong or we're going to stay late. Go back down. The S plus 7 is 1645. Minus 1645. I'm listening. So, so, all right. Layton's going to make us all stay late. Can you go back to 14? Nah, Sam, too. 14 was the same thing, wasn't it? No. But you don't want 14, did you? The rainbow I found. Sam talks too much. And you get your answers wrong too much. So. I did what now? You're right. All right, here we go. Sam don't like me. All right, we did, we did this one. A lot of riding on this. 
Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. What happened to the hunter we were talking about? Oh, number two. Go back up to number two. What did we miss? The one that David answered. Not many curses out there. Guys, have a good weekend. Y'all don't hate on me. I'm just trying. Hey, everybody, I brought a coffee maker if y'all need some coffee. It's in the break room. Light over there, please. Lights? Lights? No lights? Hit the lights. Thank you. Tell me about me for posting that picture you on Facebook. Make sure you help your hand. I didn't even see it, did I? Oh. Thank you. Yes, sir. Tuesday, you feel pretty good about it? And you're Brett Wesley. Why can't I not remember that? Mm-hmm. Wesley, are y'all like, did y'all meet here at college or were y'all friends before? I've been here at college. Okay, where are you from, Wesley? Before. Oh, you're from the country, huh? Mm-hmm. Let's see, uh, West, of, West of Canton, I think, off of 16. Is that another area? Um, you never heard of Pocahontas, have you? Uh, it's more right than that. I know what you're talking about. Have a good day, man. Thank you. Tuesday, you'll be here. Brett. Brett. I think I figured this out, Fred. I got names in the middle. All right. Thanks, man. Where are we in the now? Yes, I know it's terrible, isn't it? Hey, I've been tall, Mars. Yeah, thank you for that, okay? So it looks like Fred has got kind of blonde hair. He looks like he walked straight out of the 80s. <laughs> got them white shoes and the uh, crew socks. I feel like these guys are ready for a test, right?